Good morning, folks. Simple news today, but with not-so-simple implication and extrapolation leading to exacerbation of the situation. We've got solar force and weather effects in the galactic superwave on deck. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun continued the low-latitude presence of patchy coronal holes with the larger openings at the polar regions. The bright spot on the south is departing, but in coming on the north, we continue to see the bright arching umbral magnetic fields and their motions at the active region still sitting just over the limb. Let's look at the solar wind. All is very calm in the stream as purple plasma speed is dropping down to put us at the low intensity, slow moving end of the solar wind sliding scale. The rise in orange, however, the density, is the cause for the slight variability within that calm range, but alas, it does remain in the green indeed. Let's go to this. No, it's not over yet. Yes, I know the global warming and lack of snow articles about the eastern half of the country are drowning this out, but the frozen white assault from the sky continues out west and that's not going to change today or over the next three days or over the next five days or even the next two weeks. The snow isn't done yet, but sooner or later it will be and when that happens this will be a more common sight in the center of the country. We've seen solar activity tied to the price of wheat, oranges, corn, pork belly, you name it, but I'm not sure we've seen soy before. Might as well get them all, right? In general, they find very low solar activity leads to higher soy prices, but also more wild variability in that price. During high sunspot periods, the soy price is both lower and less variable. Here's one that's way more than it seems at first. A cardiovascular risk associated with cold fronts? You betcha. And it's not just the cold aspect of them either, which does of course matter. But I want to show you what else comes with the front. So let's go to the North Pacific temperatures and I want you to notice the yellow marks fading up to the north and how in between them the green dips further south and the yellow color bows southward as well. These are the temperature zones based on the fronts and as we turn on the wind we see why the cold areas are colder and why the hot areas are hotter. It's the wind and where it's pulling the air from. But what decides whether hot equatorial air or cooler polar air comes in? The pressure cells. Red is high pressure and purple is low. It's the western side of the low and the eastern side of the high working together to drive the cold fronts. And with the low cell that brings the cold front, you not only have a bottoming out of pressure and then a constant rise in pressure as the cold settles in, but while that pressure is building and while the cold is settling in, you're deep within the global electric circuit discharge region. It's actually a cold, pressure, and electromagnetic scenario. By the way, you can learn more about basic weather patterns, connections, phenomena, etc. with our weather learning playlist. We don't usually promote this one as much as the core material, but it's our featured list today. The first two are indeed sun-related, but are worth your time. And after that, the pure weather fun begins. Playlist is linked below. And last but not least, the reason at least half of you clicked the morning show today, we're going to the Galactic Center. It was just a few months ago when the infrared surge at the Galactic Center had everyone who had ever heard of the Galactic Superwave completely on edge for more. It turns out that the X-ray component at the highest luminosity is increasing too. While the overall X-ray output has not changed all that much, we've seen the highest of the high energy X-ray flares from the galaxy increasing in power since 2014. The good news is that this ramp up to higher activity at the galactic nucleus indeed is a ramp up and not a sudden change. The bad news about that warning signal canary in the coal mine is that it appears she's begun to sing. Just a reminder, while we focus more on the galactic fields and current sheet, we do remain diligently checking Sagittarius A data for the superwave aspect as well. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. If this super wave thing, the galactic fields, or what they mean for the sun and earth is new to you, you might want to skip that weather playlist today and go right to the cosmic disaster playlist instead. We have to learn where our feet and hands are before we pull ourselves up to take a step. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.